In my opinion, Mr. Zaz is as much a danger to himself as to others. When most people think about the many villains of the Dark Knight trilogy, they usually think of the career-defining performance of Heath Ledger as the Joker, Liam Neeson as the teacher-turned-threat Ra's al Ghul, Tom Hardy as the intellectual brute Bane. Maybe some even think of the last movie's terrible Talia, or the first film's head of the crime family Carmine Falcone. But most will probably forget Batman Begins as Victor's ass. For good reason. The part was played by Tim Booth who did a good job with what was asked of him. Uh, considering all that was asked of him was to look odd and make strange faces. That may sound like a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's actually a very apt description. The character has exactly zero lines of dialogue all throughout. He never speaks a word, not once. Instead, all the acting comes from his eyes. And quite frankly, that's almost enough. It's almost too much, to be honest with you. To the actor's credit, he does come off as very unnerving. And he does so effortlessly. His glances are cringe-inducing and fear-inspiring. And that's without the benefit of fear toxin. He's clearly a very strange, demented man, and much more importantly, a very bad person. He's an assassin who takes on hits for Gotham's crime families. Zaz doesn't really play a major role in Batman Begins. He's a much more minor part. He's a small story beat in the movie's main plot. You see, Mr. Zaz is really just included in the film as fan service for the knowing audience. But it's fan service with a purpose, as he doubles as a means to show the corruption of Dr. Jonathan Crane. You see, the not so good doctor is having Falcone's men sent to Arkham Asylum under false pretenses, sending them there to be evaluated, as opposed to letting them serve their sentence at Blackgate Prison. He has them shipped to Arkham where he can keep an eye on them, and most importantly, experiment on them. But the big problem with this narrative here is that Victor Zaz is not the right character to run this arc with. If the goal was to show Crane as being a liar, diagnosing the stable as legally insane, Zaz is a really bad choice to do that with, as Victor Zaz is absolutely legally insane. He's demented, that's the whole basis of his character. If you don't believe me, look at almost every other appearance he's ever made in media. I don't know what inspired Christopher Nolan to use this specific character for this specific story, but it was a mistake. It's not that the story itself is bad, it's that this character is the wrong person to do this story with. This story would have worked much better with characters like Sal Moroni or, or Black Mask, criminals who are corrupt but not crazed. Strangely enough, despite not speaking a word in the movie, actor Tim Booth would surprisingly reprise the role for the Batman Begins video game, a game in which he was actually given dialogue. Yeah, I like to watch. Come a little closer. I'm warning you, Zaz. Just a little closer. I want to smell you. I'll leave you your tongue so you can beg. Even more odd is that contradictory to the narrative present, he's depicted as being crazy which works as an accurate representation of the character, but doesn't work for the narrative surrounding the character in the story. So this is just really a real lose-lose scenario here. Though I will admit, at the very least, it is somewhat entertaining here. And honestly, it just makes me wonder what could have been. For whatever reason, for as small as this part was, it's had some major impact on the character's on-screen career since. In the comics, Victor Zaz is depicted as being a psychotic serial killer. And nothing more, nothing less. However, here, he's made an assassin for hire, working for the criminal underground of Gotham City, which he would do again in his next on-screen appearance in Gotham, more on that later, and yet again in his follow-up appearance in the movie Birds of Prey. Speaking about his time in Gotham, if you like this video and would like to see a video on the Victor's ass from that show, let me know in the comment section below by leaving a comment saying, How about Victor's ass? Now, before I go, I don't usually do this. I've had a Patreon for a while now, but I've really struggled with what to do with it. Luckily, the time is upon us where I can actually offer you guys exclusive and extended content that I can't make here on the channel. With new restrictions on what kind of content can be monetized or, hell, even shown here on the platform, now's as good a time as ever to be placing my completely unaltered, uncensored, extended videos on my Patreon. I don't want to put my videos behind a paywall, but that's kind of the best place to put them for the time being. So if there was ever a time to give a stranger money on the internet, well, I would like to think that now is that time.
Just so everyone knows, all the money I make off my Patreon goes directly back into the channel. Everyone who donates to the Patreon will not be seen as a fan, but rather a producer of said content. And you will be credited as such in the closing credits here on the channel. So if you have the time and a dollar to spare, help a guy out. If you can't, I appreciate your time and attention nonetheless. I am vengeance. I am the knight. And that was V Infuso. Just remember, if you're not tuning in, then you're missing out. So, if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole, and you too would like to become a V-generate, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, nerds! And if you're not joining the fun, you're in for one bad day. And you know what they say about having one bad day. <laughs> Catch him next time. Same bad time. Same bad channel.